Now, I've given some definitions for block powering and activation. Um, but before we get into where that power comes from in the first place, I'm going to go into some detail on the redstone wire and repeaters that I just mentioned, moving into the topic of redstone power conduction or transmission. So redstone dust can be placed on top of blocks uh, to construct wires. The one thing you'll want to learn about that later is the fact that over long distances the power level will fade, um, but that's a topic for another video. Redstone wires can be powered by adjacent blocks that are strongly powered and adjacent to redstone dust. So here we have, let's flip the switch, it strongly powers the block and lights up that redstone dust. Redstone wires can also be powered by repeaters. In this example, we have two redstone lamps with a piece of redstone wire between them. Now, if we power the wire by strongly powering this block, then the redstone wire will weakly power this block over here. And we can see that the block is weakly powered because this redstone repeater is lit up, but it is not strongly powered because this redstone wire here is not. And of course, we could strongly power this one and then light up that wire. Now, in this example, we can look at how the directionality of a redstone wire is important. And so what we have in this example is a wire that goes alongside these two redstone lamps. It's not pointing into them the way we have that happening over on the left. Now because of this, if we power this wire by flipping the switch, it isn't going to power or even activate either of the lamps. However, that directionality is only important for getting power out of a redstone wire. If we flip this switch, then this block is strongly powered, and as a result, it will power this redstone wire. Now normally when you lay down redstone dust, if you lay down more than one piece of it, you'll get a wire kind of shape. But the redstone dot is kind of an interesting special case because it's essentially omnidirectional. And because of that, a lot of texture packs will represent it as a plus sign shape. Now, a redstone dot can weakly power all horizontally adjacent blocks, and it can also power the block that it's attached to, but not the block that's above it. So here we've got a redstone dot that is going to be powered by the block that it's on, because we're going to strongly power this block. And as a result, it powers this lamp. And we can tell that it is powering this lamp weakly in any case, because this redstone repeater lights up. Now next to this, we're going to be powering a redstone dot from above. So if we flip this switch on, it powers this redstone dot, and we can tell that it's weakly powered because this redstone dot does not light up, which it would do if this block were strongly powered, but the redstone repeater does. Now incidentally, we're putting this green block here to prevent the wire from going down the side of the purple block. So if I break this block, now we see that this lights up because the wire has been made to go up the side of the block. So I'm going to put this block back and it cuts off the connection between these two and we can now use this properly as the test for strong versus weakly powered. In fact, this tendency for redstone wire to go up the side of a block when you put two redstone dust next to each other uh, can be useful if you want to send power up the side of a block, or it can be a problem. And if it's a problem, then what we can do is place block, solid block, a, an opaque block, in such a position as to sever this connection. So if we take this block out, then we see that this connection reforms. Here's an example of where we want to power a block using redstone wire. And specifically, what we're going to do is activate a dropper. Now, when you lay down multiple pieces of redstone dust, it will form a wire in a straight line. And if that straight line directs into the back of a block, then you can power it. So here we can click this button and it will spit out an item. But let's say you wanted to power two or you want to activate two in any case. If I go and place a piece of redstone dust here, you can see that the line is now parallel to the blocks and as a result, it's not going to power them or activate them. One common solution would be to realize that what we want to do to these blocks is not necessarily power them, but to activate them, and we can do that by powering a neighboring block. 
So I've run the redstone wire up along the sides of these blocks here. So when I click this button, they both spit out items. I can also run the redstone dust up over top of the droppers, powering them and also activating them. And finally, I can take advantage of the fact that if I power a block and a dropper is an opaque block, it will activate its neighbor. So when I click this button, they both activate because this one is powered, thus activating its neighbor. In a nutshell, redstone dust can power a block it's pointing into, but not a block that it runs parallel to. It can power a block that it's attached to, it can be powered by repeaters, and it can be powered by any adjacent strongly powered block. Underneath here, we have a redstone torch, which is strongly powering this block. And a strongly powered block can power redstone dust on all six of its sides. We have the four sides horizontally at the same level. We have the top, and we can also power redstone dust immediately below. The next component to talk about is the redstone repeater, which you can think of as a sort of signal amplifier. Now, a repeater is the primary way to strongly power another block. And so here we've got a repeater whose output end is facing into a block. We send a signal to the input end from any source, and the repeater will amplify the signal to maximum power level and also strongly power the block on its output. And as a result, we can extract a signal from that block using just redstone wire. Another use of a repeater is to pull a signal out of a weakly powered block. A weakly powered block can activate itself or a neighbor, but it can't power adjacent redstone dust. And so to do that, we're going to attach the input end of a repeater to the weakly powered block, and thus we can get a signal out. So only through the use of repeaters are we able to send signals through regular blocks. A third common use for a repeater is to amplify a redstone signal that's being sent a long distance. Now after a distance of 15 blocks, the signal level is going to go to zero, after which point you're going to need a repeater. So as you can see, this redstone wire is lit up, but the redstone lamp over here isn't because the signal level goes to zero here. So what I can do is place down a repeater and the lamp lights up. Now, repeaters will take input from one end and drive output to the other end. So, uh, using repeaters, you can actually control the directionality of conducting a signal. So, here we've got a signal running into a dropper, and this is from an example that we saw earlier. And when we placed the two uh, pieces of redstone dust next to the droppers, then they decided to run in parallel and wouldn't power the droppers. So, one thing that we can do is we can place down repeaters and direct the signal into the droppers. Notice how laying down the repeaters changes the shape of the redstone dust here, always to point into the end of the repeater. So here is a really simple example. I have two parallel redstone wires, and if I go and put a repeater between them like this, then the redstone wires get connected to the input and output ends of the repeater. Now just to demonstrate how a repeater will enforce the directionality of a signal going through it. If we turn on this switch, we power the input of the repeater and therefore we get a signal on the output. On the other hand, if we power this switch, we're powering the output side, which isn't going to conduct backwards through the repeater. As a slightly more complex example, let's consider a case where we want to run two perpendicular redstone signals, and, and you don't want them to interfere with each other. So here, what I'd like to do is um, activate this piston by powering the orange block, but I also want to send a signal alongside the piston. I want them to be independent. So in this first case here, we have uh, the perpendicular wires connecting because this bit of wire is going up the side of the block. Now one thing we can do is place an opaque block in this sort of position so that it cuts off that connection. So now we've got a signal going into the orange block that's going to allow us to activate the piston, like this. But since the orange block is weakly powered, it's not going to power the redstone dust on top. But what if I flip 
this switch instead. Uh-oh, we didn't want that to happen. The wire on top of the orange block is being powered, thus activating the piston. Plus, what if the orange block were powered strongly? Uh-oh, now we have even more crosstalk. In fact, it goes both ways. The solution is to put a repeater on top of the orange block. Now we can power that orange block however we want. It'll activate the piston, but since the repeater only takes a signal from its input end and only powers what's on its output end, it completely ignores the power state of the block below. And now we have two fully independent signals going right across each other. So here's another example where we would like to conduct some parallel signals. Now the problem with redstone wires if that if, is that if you place redstone dust next to each other, they're going to connect to each other. So there's really no good way to just make fully independent parallel lines, at least not at the same height. But if we alternate redstone dust and repeaters, then we can force them to conduct independently because the repeaters will reshape the redstone dust line so that they connect to the input of one repeater and, and the output of another. So now we can fully independently turn on these redstone lamps. Now when you right click a repeater, you can change its delay. So by default, the delay is one redstone tick, which is one tenth of a second. But uh, if you right click it, you can increase its delay to two tenths, three tenths, or four tenths of a second. So in addition to delaying the signal, a repeater also increases the duration of the signal, the length of the pulse. So for instance, if a pulse that has a duration of one tick goes into a repeater that is set to four ticks, then the output pulse will be lengthened to four ticks.